Hello and welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. So today I will be taking you through the first required practical for AQA A-Level Biology, which is the investigation into the effect of a named variable on the rate of an enzyme-controlled reaction. In this video we will be focusing on the effect of temperature on trypsin activity, which is one of the experiments that is commonly carried out in schools. So I'll be going through the different variables, so what the variables are, briefly going through the procedure and then the expected results, and then the theory behind the results, and then I'll be going through a quick exam question. And time stats will be in the comment section as always. Right, so let's get started. So the variables for this particular experiment the independent variable, which is the thing that you change, will be the temperature. It also could be things like pH, enzyme concentration or substrate concentration. But in this video, we'll be, we will be focusing on the effect of temperature. So independent variable is a variable that you change. The, de the dependent variable is the thing that you measure. So in this case, it will be the rate of the enzyme controlled reaction. So the rate of trypsin activity. And the control variable, which is a thing that you have to keep constant for the um, results of the experiment to be valid, will be pH, enzyme concentration and substrate concentration. So these are all things that you need to keep the same because they could affect the rate. So first I'm going to give you a background into what trypsin is. So trypsin is obviously an enzyme and it is found in the small intestine and hydrolyzes peptide bonds in a protein called casein to produce smaller, more soluble peptides. And casein is a protein that is found in milk. So from this information, you will have probably already drawn that trypsin is a protease. So now I'm going to be taking you through the procedure. Obviously, I won't be demonstrating it as I don't have access to a lab at the moment. So these are the basic main um, substances that you will need for the practical. So the first thing is a trypsin solution and then milk powder, which you can just get from the supermarket and pH 7 buffer because you need to keep the pH under control so that that doesn't affect the rate of the enzyme controlled reaction. So as you can see here, if I just get um, a pen tool, it says 3% milk powder, which is really important because the milk powder is our um, substrate as the milk powder contains casein, which is our substrate. And we need to keep the substrate concentration constant as that is a control variable. So, you may have already had a pre-prepared 3% milk powder solution, but if there isn't, so if the 3% milk powder hasn't already been made up, you do this. So you add 3 millilitres of milk powder solution, which is according to the basic instructions on the back of the packet, to 97 millilitres of water. So that would make up your 3% milk powder solution. So now I'll be going through the um, more detailed procedure. So you need to take two test tubes and draw an X on each tube. I will explain why later. So here I have two test tubes. The reason why we have two tubes is because one will be your um, main experimental tube with your enzyme in it. So I, you need to label that T as well. So T for trypsin. And then your second tube will be a control. In your control, you don't add the enzyme. So the purpose of the control is to see if it is trypsin that um, carries out the reaction. So you need to label one with T and one with C. The next step is to both of the tubes, you need to add 10 centimetres cubed of the 3% milk powder solution. And you can do that with a syringe or a measuring cylinder. So it's 10 millilitres. Here I've added um, 10 centimetres cubed to each tube. So that should be enough to cover the X. So you won't be able to see it on one side. 
The next step is to grab two extra tubes. To one tube, you need to add four centimetres cubed of the pH 7 buffer, and to the other one, you need to add two centimetres cubed, so two millilitres, of the pH 7 buffer and two centimetres cubed of trypsin solution. So you probably already figured this out, but the tube that you add four centimetre cubed pH 7 buffer to is your control because it doesn't contain the um, trypsin, and the one that you add the trypsin to is your main experimental tube. So I'm going to explain why you have these extra tubes. This is because you need to incubate all of the tubes at your chosen temperature, so for example 20 degrees Celsius for approximately 5 minutes. This is to get all, the, all of the tubes to the same temperature so that your experiment is valid. So here I have all of the tubes in a water bath or you could just put them in a beaker at 20 degrees for 5 minutes. So it can be in a water bath or you can just um, use water from the kettle and then cold water from the tap and get it to 20 degrees. And you need to incubate that for five minutes to get all of the tubes to the same temperature. Once this incubation period has passed, you need to add your trypsin and buffer solution to tube T with the milk powder and the control buffer solution to tube C with the milk powder and immediately start the timer. So here we have our tube T, which is the one that we're using for the main experiment, and here we have C. So to tube T, you add, you add the solution, the pH 7 buffer solution with the trypsin in, and your control is the one where you have just the pH 7 buffer because we are investigating if trypsin has an effect. Is affected by temperature sorry and you need to immediately start the timer because um, if you don't do that then the trypsin might have already acted on the casein in the milk powder before you start your timer so your results won't be valid now when you start the timer you need to time how long it takes for the x to become visible again because this indicates that the trypsin has digested the casein into small and soluble peptides. So your tubes may look like this. So the X will become visible again because the um, casein has been digested by the trypsin. And you will also have a white precipitate setting at the bottom, but you just need to ignore that. And obviously your control X won't be visible because there isn't trypsin present. Then you need to time um, how long it takes for the X to become visible and record your results in a results table because you will need to draw a graph later. So now I'm going to go through the expected results of this experiment. So here is just an example. So you've got your temperatures here, so you need to repeat the experiment at different temperatures. So I have done 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 degrees. And it is advisable that you do each temperature three times so you can get a mean average rate of reaction to make your results more reliable. And on the right here, I've got time taken for the X to become visible in seconds. So for 20 degrees, I have 550, 30, I've got 274 seconds, 40, 180, 50, 189, and 60, 458. So the next thing that you need to do is to calculate the rate of reaction from your results. As we um, are concluding our rate from um, a time, we just need to do 1 divided by our time in seconds. So it's a pretty easy calculation. So if I just add an extra column, so your rate of reaction per second, and this is what I've got, so 1 divided by 550 is 0.0018 etc etc for all of the temperatures. Now normally you would write these in standard form to make it more um, concise, but I will show you why I haven't done that. Right, so the next stage is that you need to draw a graph or plot a graph from your results. 
So I've just done this on the um, computer. Now I haven't used standard form because the graph didn't come out right when I did it in standard form. So here I've got, um, I've plotted all my points with the temperature on the x-axis and the rate of reaction on the y-axis. I should write here um, what the units are, so per second. And obviously the next thing that I need to do is to draw a line of best fit. So I'll try and do this now. I don't know how. That's not a very good line, but you get the point. So it's a very messy line, but you can kind of see the pattern there. So as you can see, the rate is initially quite slow, but it does increase. Then it reaches a peak or an optimum temperature at around 40 to 50 degrees. And then the rate of reaction rapidly declines after this. So now I'm going to talk to you about the theory behind the experiment or the theory behind the results. So I'm just going to go quickly through this as I already explained it in more depth in my proteins and enzymes video. So if you haven't watched that, you can click the card in the corner. So the rate of reaction is initially slow because the enzyme doesn't have much kinetic energy because the temperature is low. Because there isn't much kinetic energy, this means that the enzyme doesn't move around as much. So this means that it is less likely to collide with a substrate. So fewer enzyme substrate complexes are formed. As the temperature increases, the kinetic energy increases. So this means that more enzyme substrate complexes are formed. So the rate of reaction increases. And then reaches an optimum temperature where the most enzyme substrate complexes are formed. However, above the temp optimum temperature, the rate of reaction rapidly decreases. This is because the enzyme de denatures as hydrogen bonds in the active sites are broken, which induces a tertiary structure change, so enzyme substrate complexes can no longer be formed. Remember, in an exam, it is not enough at all to just write enzyme denatures. You need to write this explanation about how the hydrogen bonds in the active site are broken, so enzyme substrate complexes can no longer be formed. Right, so now I'm going to go through an exam question that is relating to this practical. I've already gone through this in my um, how to interpret graphs and tables um, video and my required practicals exam questions video and the proteins and enzymes video, but I'm just going to go through it again. So, a technician investigated the effect of temperature on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. At each temperature, he started the reaction using the same volume of substrate solution and the same volume of enzyme solution. The figure below shows its results. So here we have a graph which shows um, how the concentration of the product, so therefore displaying the rate of reaction, at two different temperatures, so 25 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius. So the first part of the question asks, give one other factor the technician would have controlled. So it is asking you what another control variable would be. So a control variable would be something else that could affect the rate of reaction. So you can't put temperature as the um, technician is already investigating temperature. So I have put pH because that is something else that could affect the rate. So if we look at the mark scheme, you can put either one of these to get the mark. So concentration of substrate solution or the concentration of enzyme solution or pH. We put pH so we would get the mark. So if we move on to the next part of the question, calculate the rate of reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. Now I said in my video on how to interpret graphs and tables that the rate is from a graph is the gradient, so the change in y over the change in x. And this question makes it pretty easy because it's asking us to calculate the rate 25 degrees Celsius and the um, line for 25 degrees Celsius here is linear. So to calculate the rate, we just do the gradient, which is the change in y over the change in x. You can see from the graph that the change in y is 10. As throughout the experiment, the concentration of product goes from 0 to 10. And the change in x is 240 seconds. 
So the rate is 10 divided by 4, 240, which comes out at about 0 0.0416. Now, in my answer, I've written 0 0.04 as it is sensible to round um, your answers to a good number of decimal places to make it easier. So I've just written 0 0.04. The second mark comes from the units, so I've written grams per decimeter cubed per second because whatever your, whichever way around you're dividing something is your units. So our um, y-axis units are grams per decimeter cubed and our x-axis units are seconds. So as we're dividing y by x, our units will be grams per decimeter cubed per second. And per, for per second, we write a minus one in superscript. So if we look at the mark scheme, the first marking point comes from the correct value for the rate, which is 0 0.04, which we have written. Also, it says here that you could have written 2.5. This is because um, you might have scaled up your answer for to... Um, minutes because the um time in seconds is quite large so to make it easier you could convert it to minutes so to do that you just multiply 0 0.04 by 60 because there are 60 seconds in a minute and you would get an answer of 2.5 so the second mark as i said comes from the units so we wrote, wrote grams per decimeter cube per second so we would get all two marks of the question but if you converted it to minutes your units will be gram per decimeter cube per minute so the last part of the question is, describe and explain the differences between the two curves. So as the question says, describe and explain, you don't just need to um, write down what is happening in the curve, you need to explain why the curve is that particular shape. Notice that the question isn't asking you to compare your results, so you don't need to use compare words like faster or steeper, for example. And also you don't need to write stuff about both curves. So you just need to describe the shape of one curve. So for this question, it is better to focus on the 37 degrees curve because it is a curve, not just a straight line. So this is what I've written. The initial rate of reaction at 37 degrees is faster than 25 degrees Celsius. So you need to describe the differences. So that is why I'm using this word faster because there is more kinetic energy so more enzyme substrate complexes are formed so as you can see i've described what is happening initially and i've explained why however at 37 degrees celsius the curve plateaus plateaus just means levels off so again i've described what's happening my explanation is because all of the substrate has been used up the substrate has been used up because um the rate is high so if we look at the mark scheme, first marking point, initial rate of reaction is faster at 37 degrees Celsius. Second marking point, because there is more kinetic energy. Third marking point, so more enzyme substrate collisions or more enzyme substrate complexes are formed. You can also write just ES to get the mark, it doesn't matter. Also, graph reaches plateau at 37 degrees because all of the substrate is used up. So we would get all five marks for, the quest quest for this question. Also it says, allow converse for dis correct descriptions and explanations for curve at 25 degrees Celsius. So you can also explain the shape of the 25 degrees Celsius line, but obviously using um, opposite words to what we have in this mark scheme. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions at all, um, no matter how big or small, please leave them in the comments and I'll see you in my next video.